Good morning everyone. Today, I'm here to talk about the incredible discovery and classification of bacteria by renowned scientists. We will be exploring the work of Louis Pasteur, Robert Koch, and Leeuwenhoek, and their contributions to further our understanding of these powerful yet very small organisms. Let's get started. Louis Pasteur was a French chemist and microbiologist who made immense contributions to the medical field. He is credited with pioneering the techniques of pasteurization and vaccine preparation, and as being the first to describe the role of bacteria in fermentation. Additionally, Pasteur helped develop the process of vaccination and was successful in curing diseases such as anthrax, rabies, and cholera. His research with microorganisms laid the foundation for the germ theory of disease. Antony van Leeuwenhoek, a 17th-century Dutch microscopist, is generally credited with being the first to discover single-celled organisms which he referred to as animalcules. This spurred Christian Gottfried Ehrenberg to further explore the significance of microorganisms, and his studies of bacteria resulted in Robert Whittaker's Five Kingdom classification system in 1969. This classification system was later refined by Louis Pasteur through his investigations of bacterial fermentation. In the 17th century, Antony van Leeuwenhoek was the first to observe bacteria, which he described as animalcules. Robert Koch and Edgar Whittaker then built on Leeuwenhoek's work, devising methods to culture and study the organisms. The culmination of this research was Louis Pasteur's germ theory of disease in the late 19th century, radically altering our comprehension of bacteria and having a profound effect on modern medicine. Leeuwenhoek was the first to report his observations of a variety of microorganisms under the microscope in the mid-1600s. Subsequently, Louis Pasteur, Ehrenberg, and Robert Koch extended these discoveries in the mid-1800s by systematically observing bacteria and protozoa. These innovations provided the groundwork for the current comprehension of microorganisms. Answer Louis Pasteur is the correct answer to this question. He was the one to come up with the term, bacteria, in 1876 and is regarded as the father of bacteriology. His studies established the basis for our knowledge on infectious diseases and helped to further our modern comprehension of the microbial environment. Louis Pasteur is often referred to as the father of bacteriology due to his critical findings in the area. Many of the methods used to detect diverse bacteria were developed by him. Pasteur was also the one who formulated the pasteurization process, which is used to eradicate hazardous bacteria in food. Inhabitant bacteria of the human intestine commonly include Escherichia coli, Vegotoa, Acetobacter, and Bedellovibrio. These microbes are significant for human well-being, since they help in digestion and the production of essential vitamins. To maintain these bacteria in equilibrium is imperative for a sound digestive system. Bacteria have a remarkable ability to adapt to their environment through a process known as pleomorphism. This can involve four types of shape changes. Polymorphism, pleiotropism, polytropism, and pleomorphism. With polymorphism, one type of bacteria can take multiple shapes. Pleiotropism and polytropism involve the bacteria responding to environmental triggers by changing shape. However, pleomorphism is a much more complex process, in which the bacteria's structure is actually changed. Regardless of the type of shape change, bacteria have the remarkable capacity to rapidly and easily adapt to their surroundings. Pleomorphic bacteria are microorganisms that can alter their shape and size according to their surroundings. An instance of this is Bejotoa, a kind of rod-shaped bacteria. Additionally, popular E. coli and the spore-forming Clostridium are also examples of pleomorphic bacteria. Lastly, Acetobacter is another illustration of pleomorphic bacteria. Answer. Hydrogenomonas is a bacteria that appears as thread or filament and is found in certain environments. It can sometimes cause plant disease, and a deeper understanding of it, as well as its counterparts, can help with further research and analysis. 
Bacteria can vary greatly in shape and size, but coccus are most common and make up a large percentage. Single cells are often arranged in pairs, chains, or clusters, and if it forms a uniseriate layer then it is more likely to be coccus. Bacillus bacteria are rod-shaped, whereas Staphylococcus and Streptococcus usually have a spherical shape and occur in clusters. Staphylococcus is a type of spherical bacteria which is arranged in an irregular pattern and produces bunches. Found in nature on most surfaces, it is normally harmless. However, some strains can be dangerous and even fatal. Knowing about the various types of bacteria in the environment and taking proper precautions is important to protect oneself. Spiral-shaped bacteria are one of the most interesting types of bacteria. Examples of these bacteria include vibrioid, spirillum, bacillus and spirochate bacteria. Noted for their long and slender corkscrew shape, these bacteria can be visible under a microscope. They have the ability to cause a variety of diseases and can also be beneficial to the environment. Knowing the properties of these bacteria is necessary to effectively manage both their possible risks and advantages. Answer. The fourth option is correct, Amphitrichus. This type of bacterium has flagella distributed throughout its body, as opposed to only at one end, or in tufts, or no flagella at all. Lophotrichus bacteria is identified by having a tuft of flagella at one end, Monotrichus bacteria by having a single flagellum, and Atrichus bacteria by having no flagella. Bacterial come in an array of intricate shapes and dimensions. There are four primary categories of bacterial flagellar configuration, the most frequent being Lophotrichus, Paratrichus, Monotrichus, and Amphitrichus. Lophotrichus and Paratrichus are characterized by multiple flagella being present at one or both ends of the cell, Monotrichus is distinguished by a single flagellum at one end, and Amphitrichus is identifiable by a single flagellum on each end. Bacteria are vital for various parts of life on Earth. The bacterial chromosome differs by species, usually having either linear or circular DNA. Also, certain bacteria might have small amounts of both DNA and RNA. Whatever the type, the genetic elements of the bacterial chromosome determines its characteristics through the genes it carries. Genophore is the main genetic material of bacteria and is composed of DNA molecules that form a double helix. This double helix stores the genetic information that is used for replication of the bacteria and for passing it on to its offspring. A plasmid is the correct answer to this question. It is a small, circular piece of extrachromosomal genetic material found in the cytoplasm of a bacterium. It is capable of replicating on its own and is often used in laboratory experiments to clone genes. Fimbriae are projections on the surface of some bacteria, while mesosomes are specialized compartments in the cell walls of certain bacteria. The nucleoid is the region in the cytoplasm of a bacterium where the genetic material is concentrated. Plasmids are advantageous tools in genetic engineering, being small, circular strands of DNA that are found in bacterial cells and able to be replicated independently of the chromosomal DNA. This makes them ideal for introducing desirable genetic material into cells that would not normally contain it. Chromatium is the photoautotroph from the given list. Neither nitrosomonas, methanogens, nor nitrobacter are photoautotrophs and they gain their energy from sources other than light. Chlorobium is a genus of bacteria that uses energy from sunlight and carbon from carbon dioxide to grow. This type of bacteria can be found in many aquatic environments and plays an important role in reducing the amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Chromatium is the correct answer to this question. It is a chemoautotrophic bacteria that can make its own food from inorganic chemicals like hydrogen sulfide. It is present in various aquatic environments and can oxidize sulfide and thiosulfate. Microorganisms of the fourth group obtain their energy through chemoautotrophic processes. Instead of using organic molecules for energy, these organisms use inorganic substances such as ammonia or sulfur, 
while also consuming carbon dioxide to produce organic molecules. Examples of species that fit into this group include Rhodospirillum and Rhodosudomonas, which can be found in a variety of habitats, from hot springs to the ocean. Xanthomonas is a bacterium capable of absorbing energy and carbon from organic matter. In contrast to other bacteria, Xanthomonas is also able to use nitrogen to sustain its metabolism. Other bacteria that obtain their energy and carbon sources from organic material include Begiatoa, Nitrobacter, and Methanogens. Examine the various kinds of saprophytic bacteria. E. coli, Rhizobium, Xanthomonas, and Bacillus are examples of bacteria that obtain their nutrients from non-living materials, such as decaying plants and animals. They contribute to the environmental balance and are beneficial in breaking down organic substances. Moreover, particular bacteria within these groups can be employed for making nutritious food items by fermentation. Microorganisms are an important factor in both human health and the environment. Chemoheterotrophs are distinguished by their capability to break down organic compounds and use oxygen as the last electron acceptor to produce energy. In contrast, chemoautotrophs use inorganic compounds like hydrogen gas for energy production. Photoautotrophs create energy through the use of light and photoheterotrophs generate energy with light, but get carbon from organic sources. Xanthomonas is the correct answer. It is an obligate parasite that needs other organisms to survive, resulting in a range of diseases in plants and animals, particularly in agricultural settings. It can spread through contaminated water or soil. Bacteria that can be used to purify water in rivers include Bedellovibrio, E. coli, Rhodospirillum and Xanthomonas. Among these, Bedellovibrio is used in the famous Ganges River. It has the ability to decrease toxins, making it a vital component in keeping the river clean. Bacteria are famously hardy and widespread organisms, and their reproduction is usually achieved through asexual methods. Endospore formation creates spore cases that are able to tolerate hostile environments, whereas budding enables the parent cell to give rise to a daughter cell. Binary fission is a typical type of asexual reproduction where a single bacterial cell divides into two daughter cells. Rarer is aplanospore, where the parent cell divides into many daughter cells. Research has shown that the time between successive binary fissions in bacteria can vary from 10 minutes to 60 minutes, with an average of 20 seconds or 20 minutes. Lederberg and Tatum discovered conjugation in bacteria in 1946, which was later confirmed by Griffith in 1952 and further detailed by Lederberg and Zinder in 1958. Hershey and Chase subsequently extended this knowledge in 1969. The F factor in bacteria is a well-studied genetic element that functions as a mobile genetic element, enabling the transfer of genetic material between organisms. It codes for a sex pilus, which facilitates the transfer of DNA into the host bacterium. The F factor is composed of both single-stranded and double-stranded DNA, as well as single-stranded and double-stranded RNA. This combination of genetic material allows the F factor to regulate its own expression and foster genetic exchange between different organisms. Conjugation between F plus and F bacteria involves the transfer of genetic material, wherein the recipient bacterium acquires dominant genes from the nucleoid and the F factor, which is part of the bacterial chromosome. Answer The question has the answer of transformation. Transformation refers to the direct transfer of DNA from one cell to another, not requiring the utilization of a virus or other vector as an intermediary. Genetic recombination is the process by which genetic material is exchanged between two genomes, resulting in a new combination of traits. There are four main forms of genetic recombination. Conjugation, transformation, transduction, and binary fission. Conjugation occurs when DNA is transferred from one bacterium to another through a specialized bridge-like structure. Transformation is the direct uptake of DNA from the environment. 
transduction is the transfer of DNA between bacteria by specialized viruses. Lastly, binary fission is the replication of a bacterial genome and its separation into two daughter cells. Joshua Lederberg and Edward Tatum first observed the process of conjugation in four different species of bacteria, E. coli, Streptococcus pneumoniae, Salmonella typhimurium, and Bejotoa, during the 1940s. They managed to establish the concept of bacterial conjugation, wherein a genetic connection is formed between two bacteria. Thanks to their work, we now possess a more comprehensive insight into the genetic diversity and evolution of bacteria over time. The donor cell is composed of an F+, chromosome, a F plasmid, a sex pilus and a conjugation tube. All of these components enable the transfer of genetic material from one cell to another. Conjugation is a method of sexual reproduction in bacteria where parental bacteria exchange genetic material. Through a direct cell-to-cell -cell contact, one bacterial cell will transfer a portion of its genetic material to another cell. This creates genetic diversity within a bacterial population, allowing traits to be transferred from one cell to another. Joshua Lederberg and Edward Tatum were the first to document the process of bacterial recombination in 1946. This followed Frederick Griffith's earlier discovery of the process in 1928. Norton Zinder further contributed to our current understanding of the process in 1952 by introducing the idea of genetic transduction. Scientists uncovered a variety of mechanisms of gene transfer or transformation in bacteria through conducting numerous experiments. Transformation, conjugation, and transduction experiments, as well as the process of binary fission, provided evidence suggesting that DNA is the genetic material responsible for transferring information from one generation to the next. This insight revolutionized our understanding of biology and is still a major component of molecular genetics. Genetic recombination in Salmonella typhimurium observed by Lederberg and Zinder involves four processes. Transformation, conjugation, binary fission, and transduction. Transformation is the act of acquiring genetic material from the outside environment. Conjugation is the exchange of genetic material between cells through direct contact. Binary fission is the splitting of a single cell into two identical daughter cells. Lastly, transduction is the transfer of genetic material between organisms through a virus. Scientists have been studying the transfer of genetic material between different species of bacteria for thousands of years. Recent findings demonstrate that bacteriophages are able to facilitate gene exchange from one bacterium to another. This has been seen in Streptococcus, E. coli, Bejotoa, and Salmonella typhimurium for the first time. Examining these bacteria and their genetic information has opened up a plethora of opportunities to learn more about the intricacies of interspecies gene transfer. Organisms such as bacteria, viruses, algae, and fungi interact with the environment and humans. Some of them can be beneficial, used in food production or medicine, but others can be hazardous, causing illnesses. Identifying which are helpful and which are harmful to us is necessary to guarantee our health and safety. Syphilis is a sexually transmitted bacterial infection caused by the spirochete Treponema pallidum. Diplococcus pneumoniae is commonly found in the respiratory tract. Salmonella typhimurium is a bacteria that often causes food poisoning. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a closely related species to Mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is a major cause of tuberculosis. Neisseria is the genus of bacteria responsible for the common sexually transmitted infection gonorrhea. Contrary to this, Treponema, Mycobacterium and Coronibacterium are not linked to this specific infection. It is essential that individuals engaging in sexual activity are aware of the dangers and take necessary precautions to safeguard themselves. Blight of rice is a major crop disease caused by several bacteria species, with Xanthonomonas axonopodes pv. Citri, Agrobacterium tumefaciens, Arwinia keratovara, and Xanthomonas oryzae being among them. 
these bacteria can lead to considerable decrease in the yield and quality of rice. In order to tackle the disease, farmers should employ prevention and control methods, such as planting resistant varieties, crop rotation, and correct fertilization practices. This slide presents four bacterial species, with the 48th slide inquiring which is causing the crown gall of apples and pear. The answer is Agrobacterium tumefaciens. Through this slide we gain an understanding of how many bacteria are damaging to plants and the results of their actions. It is also noted that the crown gall of apples and pear is caused by Agrobacterium tumefaciens. With an understanding of the habits and traits of bacteria, we can determine what types of preventive measures should be taken to safeguard our plants and crops. Answer. Canker is a bacterial disease that affects plants, caused by a bacteria that produces a toxin that results in cankers in the edible parts of the plant. This bacteria can also be used in the production of transgenic plants through its plasmid, which is a closed circular DNA molecule and serves as a vector for the transfer of genetic material or gene modification. In conclusion, canker is the answer to this slide. Knowing the role of Pseudomonas, Erwinia, Xanthomonas and Clostridium, all four common bacterial genera, is vital in order to successfully manage the diseases of crops such as rice and citrus canker. Correct answer is Salmonella. This bacterium is a common cause of foodborne illness, presenting symptoms from fever, weakness, nausea and headache to severe abdominal pain and diarrhea. Salmonella is highly contagious and can rapidly spread through food and water. In order to help prevent infection, it is important to practice proper food safety and hygiene. Coleochate, also referred to as flexible spirillum, is a type of bacteria that is identifiable by its flexible structure and coiling. It is usually present in aquatic habitats and can serve a range of purposes in the ecological system. Bacteria can cause various illnesses and diseases, and it is important to be aware of the difference between the different sets. Set 2 comprises tetanus, tuberculosis, and measles, while set 3 includes malaria, mumps and poliomyelitis. Set 1 consists of cholera, typhoid and mumps. Being able to differentiate and identify these diseases is beneficial in order to be well informed and ready. Biomining involves extracting valuable metals like uranium from rocks for use in mining and other industrial applications. Bioforming is a process that uses microbial activity to create rocks. Bioremediation uses natural activities of microorganisms to clean up pollutants such as oil or hazardous chemicals from contaminated areas. Biostatistics is the application of statistical methods to measure and compare biological data. Bacteria are extremely minuscule and versatile organisms that have been identified to possess a significant part in diverse applications. One of these is the utilization of biosensors to identify biologically active noxious pollutants. Biosensors are constructed using mixtures of proteins and enzymes, incorporating endonucleases and exonucleases, as well as biomarkers, which can be utilized to detect deleterious substances in the environment. With their extraordinary capability to recognize and react to even the slightest amount of toxic pollutants, biosensors demonstrate to be an invaluable asset for conserving the environment. Antony van Leeuwenhoek is widely regarded as the initiator of microbiology. He was a Dutch scientist who is noted for being the primary person to detect and explain single-celled creatures, and to detect microorganisms in water. Louis Pasteur, a French chemist and microbiologist, then followed Van Leeuwenhoek, and is renowned for disproving the then-popular hypothesis of spontaneous generation, and making numerous discoveries in the field of vaccine creation. Robert Koch, a German doctor and microbiologist, contributed to the disclosure of the particular causative elements of ailments, and his revelations about the tuberculosis bacillus are particularly noteworthy. Lastly, Christian Gottfried Ehrenberg, a German naturalist and microscopist, made multiple contributions to the area of microbiology, including the identification of a variety of new microscopic organisms. Xanthomonas and Salmonella are both bacteria with different characteristics. 
Xanthomonas is a parasitic bacteria which obtains energy and nutrients from other living organisms. On the other hand Salmonella is a saprophytic bacteria which derives its energy from dead organic matter. Additionally, there are photoautotrophic and chemoautotrophic bacteria which use either light or chemical reactions to drive their metabolism. Bacteria come in many varieties and can be classified by their mode of energy acquisition. Four main categories include photoautotrophs, chemoautotrophs, photoheterotrophs and chemoheterotrophs. Photoautotrophs acquire energy from light, chemoautotrophs from chemical processes, photoheterotrophs from light and organic compounds, and chemoheterotrophs from organic compounds. Bacteria can be significant in biological cycles and ecosystems. Four individuals are credited for the observation and description of bacteria. Louis Pasteur, Leeuwenhoek, Robert Koch and Ehrenberg. Pasteur is most noted for his discoveries in the fields of pasteurization and vaccination. Leeuwenhoek created the first microscope strong enough to observe bacteria, while Koch, a German physician, first demonstrated that bacteria cause disease. Ehrenberg, a German naturalist, was the first to recognize and classify bacteria into distinct species. Rhizobium is a bacterium found in the roots of legume plants. It has a symbiotic relationship with the plants, providing essential nutrients like nitrogen and allowing them to develop and grow properly. If there is an absence of rhizobium, legume plants are likely to suffer from stunted growth or even death. Bacteria are significant for the propagation of severe illnesses, like leprosy and tuberculosis. These illnesses are brought about by mycobacterium as well as two other bacteria. Salmonella and Coronibacterium We need to know more about these bacteria so as to comprehend better how these illnesses are spread and treated. Each of the three species of bacteria, E. coli, Streptococcus pneumoniae, and Salmonella typhimurium, were found to have transduction, conjugation, and transformation, respectively. This is significant as each species was the first to demonstrate the aforementioned traits, representing a crucial milestone in our comprehension of how organisms are capable of transferring and altering genetic information. Bacterium coronibacterium diphtheriae belongs to the bacilli group. It is coated with a thick, gray surface and has high infectivity, able to spread rapidly through contaminated surfaces or exchange of respiratory secretions. Symptoms tend to range from a mild sore throat to serious local infection, with inflammation on the tonsils, larynx or pharynx, and even life-threatening difficulties. Diagnosis and treatment should be done early in order to prevent it from spreading further. Bacteria range from simple to complex, and they are an essential part of the environment. This slide concentrates on four main species of bacteria. Salmonella a rod-shaped, gram-negative bacterium. Escherichia coli, E. coli, a gram-negative, facultative aerobe, anaerobe, and microaerophilic bacterium. Streptococcus, a bacterial species that are common in the upper respiratory tract. And Acetobacter, a genus of acetic acid bacteria that oxidizes ethanol to acetic acid in the presence of oxygen. All of these microorganisms can cause severe illnesses in humans, so it is important to understand them for effective prevention and treatment. Regarding how bacteria transfer their genetic information, there are four main possibilities. These are transformation, transduction, conjugation, and binary fission. Transformation happens when genetic material is taken from the surroundings. Transduction is where genetic material is transferred between bacteria via phages or viruses. Conjugation is the direct transfer of genetic material from one bacterial cell to another. Lastly, binary fission is the process of bacterial cell replication, forming identical daughter cells. Conjugation is the first observed method of sexual reproduction in bacteria, which involves the exchange of genetic material between two bacteria and results in genetic variation. A bridge forms between the two bacteria and a plasmid DNA is transferred from one bacteria onto the other. 
This exchange of genetic material allows bacteria to gain new and beneficial traits, allowing for adaptation to their environment. The answer for this slide is evident. The interval of time between successive binary fissions of a cell is referred to as generation time or doubling time. This phrase defines the length of time it takes for a cell to replicate itself, or double, by splitting into two. Groundbreaking discovery of the germ theory of disease, originally proposed by Robert Koch in 1876, was a monumental step towards understanding how diseases are transmitted. Theory was further developed by several scientists, such as Louis Pasteur and Robert Brown, and it allowed us to comprehend that disease is caused by presence of invisible microorganisms in the environment. Finally, Ehrenberg studied bacteria classification, and his findings helped us understand biology and dynamics